example two, a box with no top is to be constructed from a 16 inch by 16 inch piece of cardboard by cutting out squares from the corners and folding up the sides. What size squares should be cut out to minimize the volume of the box? Let's see here. Let's go ahead and actually just start off with a 16 inch by 16 inch square box. Let's say that looks close enough. Okay. And then next, let's think about those squares that we're supposed to be cutting out of this. Now, don't forget this uh, box here is 16 inches by 16 inches. Okay. And these pieces that we cut out are square, meaning that each one of their side lengths are, are the same. So why don't we just call those side lengths X? But I do want you to, to pause for a second and just think about this. If we did cut out those squares, okay, and we folded this box, um, or, or folded this piece of cardboard, it would turn into a box, right? And the places where we'd be folding this would be along these cuts right here. So when you do go to fold it, this will be a side of the box. There we go. So now that we have all this, let's think about again what we're trying to do here. It says, what size squares should be cut out to maximize the volume of the box? So what we need to do is figure out how to write the volume of the box. We know that the volume of a box is usually the length times the width times the height. Okay. Well, let's start off with maybe thinking about how long this is going to be. This is how long it would be, right? And technically, this would be how wide it would be here. Well, what are those two side lengths? And actually, I should point out both those side lengths are going to be the same. Well, if you hadn't cut out the squares, right, it would be 16 inches total. Let me write that a little bit neater. 16 inches total minus these lengths here, x and x, okay. or on this bottom side, x and x. If we take 16, take away those two x's, that'll give us the actual length of this box. Okay. So we get v equals, so 16 minus 2x times 16 minus 2x. The only thing we're missing here is the height um, and let's think about what the height would actually look like. Well, again, if we were to think about folding here, well, then the height is just going to be these side lengths. It's going to be x. Okay. So I'm going to just multiply by x here. So now that we have our, our objective function, you might be thinking, well, what's our constraint going to be? Well, we actually don't have one. And we don't need one. Okay. We don't need one because we only have one variable. We can take the derivative of this thing. Okay. So let's go ahead and rewrite v a little bit here. If we were to expand this out before differentiating, of course, if we were to expand this out, we'd get 256 minus, oh, and I don't want to forget my x here, 256x minus 64x squared plus 4x cubed. And is what we want to do with this is differentiate it, right? We want to um, either use the closed interval test or use our first or second derivative to help us determine um, whether we have a local minimum, local maximum, and, and where that's happening at. 
But before we do that, we should probably determine the domain here. Okay. We want to determine the domain of our objective function. So first of all, side lengths, they cannot be smaller than zero, right? Um, so those, those little X's there that we see in our diagram, right? Those can't be smaller than zero. They can't be negative. Okay. And they, you really wouldn't want them to be zero, right? But they technically could, it could be X equals zero, meaning you're not cutting anything out here. So that would be zero. But what's the biggest that X could be? Think about that for a second. What is the biggest that X could be? Well, if X was equal to eight, that means you'd cut eight inches this way, which would put you at the center, and you'd also cut eight inches from this direction. And so these would meet up at the middle and you wouldn't have any box left. Okay, so you could theoretically go up to X equals eight. And the nice thing is, is we have a closed interval. We can use our closed interval test to verify that we actually get an absolute maximum here. So let's take our first derivative and identify our critical points. So we take that first derivative, we get 256 minus 128x and then four times three, so plus 12x squared. Okay. And you can see that this first derivative, it is never undefined. This is a polynomial, but it might be zero in some locations. Let's see if we can figure out when this thing's equal to zero. Okay, now we're going to wind up trying to factor this or use the quadratic formula since this is a quadratic. Let's, let's start off by seeing if we can divide each side of the equation by anything. Looks like we can divide um, both sides of this equation by 4 and we're still left with whole numbers. Let's do that so we have smaller numbers to work with. So if we do that, um, this is going to wind up looking like... Um, actually, I'm going to take one more step here first. I'm going to reorder this, but be thinking about what that number is. What's that number we're going to divide by? I just want to reorder this so that it's in the same order that we're used to seeing quadratic functions in. Okay. And so if we were to divide by 4, we'll get 3x squared minus... And so 128 divided by 4, that's going to give us 32. And then 256 um, divided by 4, that's going to give us 64. And then the question is, is can we factor this? Okay. And you can factor or use the quadratic formula. But if I were to, to try and factor this, I would note, well, if this is going to factor nicely, I know that the first term needs to be 3x in one of these and x in the other. And then we just need to come up with two numbers that'll multiply to 64. So our options, we have a lot of them, but if we start off with minus eight and minus eight, we'll be done here. Okay. You can verify um, that this gives us 3x squared minus 32x plus 64. And you can verify it by multiplying this back out. So if this is the case, then this thing is zero when x is equal to what? Uh, actually, I should write this out. 3x minus 8 is equal to zero, or x minus 8 is equal to zero. So this tells us that the first derivative is zero when x is equal to what, eight thirds, or x is equal to eight. Okay. So we have two critical points, x equals eight thirds, x equals eight. 
and those just came from our derivative. Don't forget, we also want to check the endpoints. So we will check um, the value of the volume when x equals zero and when x equals eight. So let's, let's use that closed interval test. So the first thing we want to check is the endpoints. So if you try to find v of 0, okay, what's that going to be? Looks like we have 16 times 16 times 0 if x is 0. Let's go ahead and write that in here. 16 times 16 times 0, which is equal to 0. So this could be our absolute minimum. But hopefully this isn't our absolute maximum. Let's uh, next test the other endpoint, 8. And if you do that, this also results in a volume of 0. Okay. So chances are this absolute maximum that we're looking for is probably going to occur right here. Okay. Let's find out if, if that's the case. So V of 3 eighths should be equal to, and so remember we're plugging 3 eighths into this function up here at the very top. Okay, So if you plug in 3 eighths, or uh, 8 thirds, sorry, if we plug in 8 thirds, I actually wrote 3 eighths down here, let's fix that. If we plug in 8 thirds on our calculator and hit math frac, you're going to get this uh, wonderful fraction here, 8,192 all over set, uh, 27. Okay. So this is the biggest of these three, which means that this is the, the absolute maximum that we were looking for. And I should point out, this is the ma absolute maximum of the volume, right? This is the biggest possible volume. Okay. And you might have noticed that in the steps I, I had written for us in order to do these problems, number seven says, make sure you've answered the question. Well, have we answered this question? We were asked to find an absolute maximum, but we were actually asked, what size squares should be cut out to maximize the volume of the box. So that means that these squares should be actually 8 thirds by 8 thirds inches. Okay. And there's our final answer. And again, if you wanted to, to write this down as a volume, this technically would have been inches cubed.